Earlier this week on Wednesday evening, when the sun set, began the Passover season for the Jews. The Passover season is a holiday, a Jewish holiday, that goes back thousands of years. However, uh, what we read of it in Exodus chapter 12 uh, carried over all the way through the first century. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he commemorated the Passover with his disciples. Now we know some of the things that they had. We know that they had glasses of wine at the table. We also know from Exodus chapter 12 that they ate roasted lamb as well as unleavened bread or what's called matzah today, uh, as well as bitter herbs. But out of all the elements that were on the table on that particular Passover evening that Jesus shared with his disciples that we refer to as the Last Supper, He took two of those emblems. He took the unleavened bread, the matzah, uh, as well as uh, a cup of wine. And he blessed each, uh, telling us that the bread now represents his body that was broken on the cross. The blood represented the blood of the new covenant under which we are now bound, no longer to have to keep the Mosaic law. And so because we know that uh, this week, beginning at sunset on Wednesday, was Passover, we know that Yesterday evening, Thursday evening, uh, at the Passover meal that Jesus would have shared with his disciples many, many years ago, Uh, that was the night that he was betrayed. And so today, Good Friday, uh, as it's often referred to in our calendars and throughout the world, uh, was the day on which Jesus was crucified. And so here's a timeline of events of things that would have occurred. From 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., Jesus would have been tried before Annas and Caiaphas. From 6 to 8 a.m., he would have been tried before Pontius Pilate and Herod, going back and forth, uh, each of them arguing over whose jurisdiction this was. From 8 to 8.30 a.m. on Good Friday, Jesus carried his cross with the help of Simon of Cyrene to Golgotha, or Mount Calvary. At 9 a.m., Jesus was crucified. We know this because of the scriptures that point to this, but Mark 15, 25 says it was the third hour that Jesus was crucified, and the third hour was 9 a.m. From 9 to 9.30 a.m. is when the soldiers divided Jesus' clothing, and he prays for them. From 9.30 to 11, the soldiers watched over the crucifixion, and they mocked Jesus, saying, He can't save himself. From 11 a.m. to noon, Jesus speaks from the cross to the thieves on either side, and that repentant thief asks that he be remembered when Christ goes into his kingdom. At noon, from noon to 3 p.m., three hours of darkness came upon the land. From noon to 3 p.m., closer to 3 p.m., the earthquakes... The veil of the temple is torn asunder, and Jesus thirsts. And at 3 p.m. on that Good Friday, Jesus breathed his last breath, giving up his spirit to God. Now that Thursday, or rather that Friday, Good Friday, would have been day one. That was the day that Jesus died on. And before the sun had set, he would have been placed in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. From sundown Friday evening to sundown Saturday, that's day two. That's considered the Sabbath. And from sundown Saturday evening to sundown Sunday evening, that's day three. So we read in the scriptures that Jesus rose on the third day. And if you count how we count time, we would say, well, he was crucified on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's only two days. But the Jews counted time differently. Uh, They would have counted Friday as day one, the Sabbath is day two, and the first day of the week is day three. And so maybe that explains or clears up a misunderstanding that uh, some of us might have had. But what I want you to focus on right now is the interlude between the time that Jesus died until Sunday. Now, for the span of about three years, Jesus' apostles had followed him. They had committed themselves to him. They had heard him teach, seen him perform miracles. They had faith in him, as well as many, many other people. But now they have seen 
the anointed, the promised Messiah of God, crucified on the cross. And this would have went against the grain of what they believed the Messiah's purpose was. And so from the crucifixion of Jesus until that first day of the week, they lived in a, a, an interlude of hopelessness. They lived in an interlude of uncertainty, of disappointment, maybe even despair. I think that describes our current time now. We too are living in that interlude. And I know for some people, uh, one of the things that many people have suffered with is the death of a loved one during this time. And what's especially difficult about that during this time, uh, probably more so than other, is because you can't be with them at the hospital. You can't have the public visitation or wake for the loved one at the funeral home. And uh, there, there are restrictions as to funerals all around. But what the apostles and all the disciples of Jesus didn't know was that Sunday was coming. Sunday would be a day filled with joy. Hope would be restored. They would be their risen Savior. And so as we live in this interlude of uncertainty and despair, whether it be over the loss of a loved one or because of the current circumstances of our time, let's all keep repeating to ourselves and remembering Sunday is coming. If we can do anything to be of assistance to you, please feel free to call upon us. Yes.